let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs>
places to sin and temptation. We trespass against each other and we trespass against the Lord God Almighty. A God who is merciful, abounding in steadfast love and kindness, will forgive our sins if we but ask and receive this grace. So in humility and faith, let us confess our sin before God and one another.
be like when you grow up? What would you say? You, okay, so you want a what? A balloon twister. You, okay, but those are professionals. I want to know what you want to be like. Who do you want to be like? And why? Why do you want to be like that? Why do you want to be that way? So you can help people. Okay. And what about twisting balloons? What does that do? <laughs> oh, you pop them. Okay. Well, that, okay. That's cool. What else? How, what else? What do you want to be like? Okay, how come? Okay, so you want to work in a shelter so that you can help people and animals. Like a homeless shelter. Okay. So is there somebody that you want to be like that you know that does that kind of work? Okay, okay. So you just, you want to be that compassionate person, huh? What do you want, what do you want to be like when you grow up? A mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you spend a lot of time in the pool? Because when I was your age, I used to spend all of my summers in the pool or in the lake, and I was always accused of being a fish. So I totally get this mermaid thing because it's cool and it's it's just it's wet and it's wonderful, isn't it? A lot of fun. Who do you want to be like?
<laughs> okay, so 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 you wanted to be an innkeeper, and and that and that would be like Jesus. How? I like to be a shark. Because you'd be taking lunch because you'd be letting people come in, right? And you wouldn't be putting anybody out. You remember that happened to his family before he was born, right? Yeah, so. You would be a shark. <laughs> but how is that like Jesus? <laughs> I'm thinking to think about it, aren't I? Okay, so we'll talk about that another time. How's that? <laughs> now, so here's, here's what I want you to remember. First of all, we're supposed to be like Jesus. So when we think about who we want to be like when we grow up, maybe one of the answers that we always come to is I want to be like Jesus. Well, why do I want to be like Jesus? Because he loved people, because he helped people, because he healed people, because he was a really good teacher. Sure. Because he died on the cross. Yeah. He was good to us, wasn't he? He was really good for us. Now, I want you to think about what you would do if you were a tree or if you were a mountain or if you were a hill or a wide open field. What would you do to say, yay? What would you do? If you were a tree, you'd kind of be like this, wouldn't you? But you know what happens in, in the fall? What happens with trees? And their leaves do what? Fall off. Before they fall off, what happens? They turn, they turn colors. And they go from this nice deep green to what kind of colors of joy? Red. Reds and oranges and yellows, and right? Brown. And green. And sometimes purple. <laughs> Okay, okay, right. Now, if you if you were a mountain, how might you show joy? The what? The, okay, the grass. Do you ever do you ever see the rocks piled up at the bottom of a mountain? You you never seen that? You heard of it though, right? Okay, so the rocks. The rocks. Bear with me because I'm going somewhere. The rocks fall, and when they fall, they make a noise, right? It, it could be a rock slide, it could be an avalanche, or it could just be a, and it sounds like hands clapping, right? So if we were going to make a song about that, and, and I'm going there, folks, so you might want to open up your hymnals to the benediction hymn, which is 80. Okay. So I want to talk about this because part of this idea of we're going out to be like Jesus, but we're also going to go out with joy, okay? And we're also going to be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills, you got mountains on one side, the hills on the other, and they're just going to open up for you, okay? There will be shouts of joy. And all the trees of the field, catch this, will clap their hands. Can you imagine a tree having hands? Yeah. It sounds kind of like the Wizard of Oz. It does. It does. It does. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I forget this. Okay, very good. Yeah. I need to get up there and see that. Okay. So what I want you to do is we're going to stand up. And Belinda is going to help us. She, we're going to sing a song together. But when we get to the trees of the field, we'll clap their hands. Can you do this? Clap, clap. Ready? The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. Uh, the trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. Okay, so when we get to that line, so we're all going to stand up and we're going to sing this because we need to practice it. So everybody stand as you are able. You want to play it through one time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
tell anybody that Presbyterian is clapping. Can you clap? Yeah. <laughs> Can't have that word yet now. <laughs> Will you please turn to Psalm 130? And if you if, please please get where you can look on with somebody to a Bible because we didn't print it in the bulletin. And it's on page 705. Do you guys usually do a responsive reading? Is that the normal? No. no? Yes, no? We used to. Well, we're going to bring it back because I like responsive readings. And also because sometimes the Psalms are really good to us. So uh, the way that I do this is I'll read a line, I'll read a verse, you read the next verse. Okay, we'll just alternate back and forth. Is everybody ready? Okay, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears you, O Lord, should mark iniquities. Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. And then from John's Gospel. Starting at verse 35 and then jumping to verse 41. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person upon that last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Here ends the third lesson. And then from 1 Kings. Ahab and Elijah have conspired against, and not Ahab and Elijah, Ahab and Jezebel have conspired against all of the prophets of Israel. They have destroyed all of the prophets except Elijah. And Elijah receives a note from Queen Jezebel saying, All of these things have been done, and so may it also be done to me if I do not also destroy you. Elijah, you better run. But Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. And he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. 
The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights, to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How many times have you looked at your children and said, what are you doing here? How many times have you gotten yourself into a situation and said, what am I doing here? <coughs> How many times have you been trying to figure out a puzzle and you scratch your head and you say, what am I doing here? How many times have you walked into another room and forgotten what you walked in and said, what am I doing here? Everyone. I hate to tell you this, but that is a regular occurrence daily for me. I will walk into a room and say, what am I doing here? I really, really, really wanted to connect this scripture to the scripture in John where Jesus tells people that unless the Father draws them to the Son, they won't find their way. And I thought, oh my goodness, that smacks of predestination. And then I started doing research on predestination. I decided I didn't really want to talk about it. Because predestination is one of those things that is a very, very slippery slope. Do you understand what predestination is? Predestination is one of those things where the definition is easy enough to understand. Predestination, if we were predestined to be here together today, it's because sometime a long, long time ago, the Lord said, in August of 2018, the Reverend Ruth Clendenin will join the ministry of First Presbyterian Church in Aberdeen, South Dakota. It is something that is out of our hands. Predestination is something that was planned for long, long ago, and we are just discovering it today, right now, in 2018. Now, do not misunderstand me. Predestination is not to be misunderstood or confused with fatalism. Fatalism says it's all been decided, so it doesn't matter what we do. That's just how it's going to be. Now, predestination gives us choices and free will. And then God works God's purposes in and around and through all of those choices that we make. It is disturbing to me sometimes that we listen to scriptures like this and we say, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah says, what, well, what he didn't say was, really, Lord, I'm ready to die because all of my friends have died. The Israelites have completely destroyed your temple. They've destroyed your prophets. And I just, I don't have anything left. And so Elijah falls in a heap under a tree, goes fast asleep, and then is wakened by an angel tapping him on the shoulder saying, Elijah, wake up, eat. And here is bread and water for his journey to, nour to nourish him. 
and he's still so tired that he goes back to sleep again. And he gets that angel tapping him on the shoulder again, saying, Elijah, wake up, eat, drink. Otherwise, you won't have strength for your journey. And Elijah eats and he drinks. And then he goes on this journey for how many? 40 days and 40 nights, right? And he gets to Mount Horeb. And I stopped the reading there on top of the mountain because that's where the Lord greets him and says, what are you doing here? I think sometimes that that is the question that people asked of Jesus, and especially people in his own hometown. They looked at Jesus and they said, what are you doing here? We know who your parents are. How can you tell us that you are the bread that has come down from heaven? We know who you are. And we know that you didn't come from heaven. We know your parents and your brothers and sisters. What are you doing here? And then Jesus, in typical fashion, says, you can't come to the Son unless the Father has drawn you in first. I think Jesus is the originator of evasive answers. It's true. Because sometimes we just know that what we're doing is what we're supposed to be doing. But we can't really explain why we're doing what we're doing, how we got to that conclusion, can we? Unless you're a process theologian like I am, and really very much a, a verbal processor too. I will talk everything to death. Session, get ready. <laughs> What are you doing here? What are you doing here? No, seriously, this is, I want to hear back from you. What are y'all doing here? You're listening about God, okay. What you got? Sundays we go to church. Sundays we go to church, that's what we're doing. That's what you do on Sundays, right? What else? Hmm? Being lazy? <laughs> Because if you come to church, you don't have to be out doing yard work. I know that story. <laughs> if I come to church, I don't have to be at home unpacking boxes. <laughs> right? But what are we doing here? What are we supposed to be doing here? Worshiping God. That's one. What else? What else are we doing here? Fellowshipping. What else are we doing? Praying. Praying, yeah. What else are we doing? Praising God. Praising God, yeah. Forgiving. For, forgiving? Was that it? Was that, did I hear right? Forgiving? Yeah, sometimes that happens too. We do reconciliation in the church, don't we? What else are we doing? Ha, <laughs> okay. We're going to be doing some mission and ministry work, aren't we? We're going to be learning. We're going to be rummaging. That's coming up in a few weeks. But there's one other thing that we do. And it's called practicing our faith. And part of the reason that we show up every Sunday at church, because that's what we do on Sundays, is to practice what we say we believe. And the reason that we call it practicing is because none of us ever really gets it right every single time we come at it. We're not flawless, but we are human, and we are God's beloved children. So what are we doing here? We're practicing our faith. We're praising God. Or loving one another according to Christ's command. And we're predestined to it. It was something that God said years and years and generations and generations before we were ever here that we will love one another. This is what we're doing here. We are loving one another we're going out and loving in our community. 
we're going into our workplaces and sharing the love of God. This is what we're doing. And this is what we're doing here. And everything that we do here in these walls strengthens us for that journey. And we make that journey assured that God is the one who is drawing us into it. Amen. Will you stand as you are able and let us sing together? Preaching 
preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating without guests, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. We trust in God, in Jesus our God, Father, in sovereign love, God our creator.
now, my friends, recognizing that all that we have and all that we are comes from God, let us now give back to God our gifts and our offerings. Will the ushers please come forward?
joy and peace. Let us sing. And where are my kids to help with the clapping? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.